Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to tell you about some more exciting news out of the country of Italy, who's doing a great job with um, manipulating wheat and trying to have less gluten in it. Uh, last week I mentioned about a very successful study where they hydrolyzed wheat, and basically they did this naturally, and um, miraculously they uh, made a wheat flour that was gluten-free. So it's, it's, it's amazing to even think of that in the same sentence as wheat and gluten-free, but there you go, they did it successfully. But what I wanted to talk about today was a different study where they did something different and it was a lot less successful and why. And it goes to uh, where we need to go in laboratory testing. So what this study did was they took wheat and um, they basically broke down gliadin, which is uh, one of the problem uh, proteins in wheat that creates a lot of the inflammation that we know bothers celiacs as, the, as well as those with gluten sensitivity. Um, but what we know now is that um, alpha gliadin is, is the name of this specifically, and this was the, the part of the protein that has been trying to be identified in lab tests over the years. Uh, but as an example, in celiacs, we know that 50% of them, even though we absolutely know they have celiac disease, do not show a positive reaction to that part of the protein, this alpha-gliadin. And uh, we thought that was the really problem portion. What we've now come to find is that there are probably, well, there are over a hundred of these uh, peptides, so, so chains of amino acids, uh, these are parts of protein, that there's over a hundred of them, and at least 60 of those 100 are problematic. So now, look at the fact that of those 60, we've only been looking at one and measuring one in our lab test. So now you start to realize why people can have a laboratory test that comes out negative and they're told they're fine when in fact they're not. So the researchers that um, made this bread out of wheat that had they had gotten rid of this alpha gliadin, sure enough when celiacs ate it they felt okay for a while, but what the laboratory test showed was that their immune system was reacting. Their immune system was inflamed and really having a problem with this particular flower. So even though uh, the, the participants didn't necessarily feel bad, on a deeper level, their body was reacting. And that's, of course, what's most important because that's what's causing the damage. That's what's setting up for autoimmune disease as well as a host of other diseases diseases, including neurological problems, depression, etc. So uh, while the, the, the study was not that successful, uh, what we come to realize from it is the importance of having laboratory tests that can really identify all of these uh, chains of amino acids called peptides uh, so that we can really increase our accuracy. So. The take home from this is uh, there is a new laboratory out that we're very excited about. Uh, they're measuring uh, 10 of these possible 60, and while 10 out of 60 might not sound terrific, it's definitely a lot better than one. So we will start to see more positive tests for those people who are legitimately gluten sensitive. Uh, this laboratory is called Cyrex Labs, and, and they're pretty new on the scene, um, but we've been using them and, and we're excited about the results. So that's good news. Um, and just realizing that the exciting news is that this whole evolution is really moving forward at a nice pace. Certainly not as fast as I would like and, and probably not as fast as you would like either, but it is moving. Research is coming out. Uh, recently Dr. Fasano stated that 10% of the population is gluten sensitive. I think that's higher, but this is based on a researcher who has to, of course, validate uh, very specifically what he finds. Last year he thought it was 6 to 7 percent. Uh, just half a year later it's up to 10. I think research is going to continue to find it higher and higher. But the point is, those, that's 10 percent of the population. If celiac is a common disease at 1 percent, then obviously gluten sensitivity, even if, if at 10 percent, of course I think it's higher, but even if it was 
simply 10%, that would put it in a very, very common category, and then we will start seeing more and more people paying attention to it. So uh, there's a little update for you about the, the celiac and gluten sensitivity world of research, and I hope you find this informative. Please let me know uh, if you have any questions. I do love to hear from you. Until next time, I wish you very good health.